right, good morning. It's uh, July 21st, 2019. It's uh, nice and warm already. You can hear my air conditioner al already running this morning. It's 11.30 in the morning. I'm in a campground in Bedford, Pennsylvania called Friendship Village. Here, I'll give you a, a little tour of the of the campground. People are are packing up and leaving. We, on the other hand, are not. We're here for two more days. But the purpose of this video is right here. I wanted to show you my 320 watt solar install. I have wired them in series. tell there two panels the panels are 160 watts each the only hole I had to put on my roof was the hole to pass these two wires down into the hutch so a little bit about this install I'll see if I can show you here. I can see I'm going to have to do a little cleaning here. Ugh, I'm getting down on my belly here. What we got going here, guys, is elevator bolts being held down with Endurabond tape. These are approximately two feet long. They have a little step. They're close enough together that the panel can't lift out of there. Even though it's loose, it looks like it's loose, it's secure enough that it can't go north or south or east and west. But what's really nice about this install, and I have to give a lot of credit to uh, uh, Brian with uh, RV and with Tito. Um, we added what is called uh, polycarbonate cardboard underneath that's going to help insulate the roof from any heat that's generated on the solar um, the holes are going north and south in this case I thought they were going east and west no definitely north and south so which is no no, it doesn't really make no difference as long as it's getting uh, an airflow underneath it. So, again, this is 320 watts. I have 320 more watts sitting at home. So I've got these two panels sitting here. By the way, uh, before you guys, you guys out there probably right now shaking your heads going, Oh my God, what has he done? I got over 1,500 miles on these things already. They're holding up exactly the way I expected them to. But anyway, the other 1,500 watts are going to go right here. From whatever it takes up to that vent, right back to this skylight. It should be about the same amount of room that I used on the other side. Now I'm going to bring the wires down between the bathroom vent and the bathroom skylight. And I'm going to be drilling another hole right about right here just to get the wires to the roof. And then I'm going to fish them to the same hole that I brought these two wires in down into the hutch. Okay. So the, this is a Renergy kit. Um, I bought two kits because I wanted to have redundancy. And what I mean is, if something should happen to this solar um, kit that I've already installed, if I had another one installed, I won't be limited to zero. I'd still have 320 watts. If both of them are working, I'm gonna have 640 watts. Well, I hope I'm not too close. You probably see nose hairs, don't you? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, let's uh, let's go take a look inside and show you where I brought the wires in at. Okay, so now we're back inside. 
if you look up there towards the ceiling here, I gotta reach up here, you'll see the two cables coming from the roof. I'm going to fish the other two cables through that same hole. So there'll only be one extra hole in the roof, but only this hole coming in. Now, you probably see a lot of stuff in here. I'll try to break it down for you. First of all, there are two charge controllers. Remember I told you I have two separate kits? Okay, I'm gonna have a left and a right or a one and a two, whichever way you wanna look at it. This is what it looks like on the other side. Okay, they light up. The bottom one right now is being used because we're keeping the batteries charged. Top one isn't installed yet. Okay, so the positive wire coming in is going through a circuit breaker. The circuit breaker then jumpers over to the to the charge controller. From the charge controller, the output side, the positive is going to another uh, circuit breaker, and then it's going up to a terminal block. Now the negative from from the back of the charge controller is going straight to the negative terminal block. So I have two terminal blocks for two charge controllers sending one wire or one pair of wires to the batteries these are the wires going to the batteries these are uh, number six gauge okay by the way uh, these items sitting right here those are the Bluetooth devices uh, for both of these charge controllers okay so once I ran the power behind the hutch, by the way, I put this wall in here to make sure nothing fell on top of the, uh, any of the wiring. And this wall here is actually a sub panel. See how I can get my fingers behind it? I wanted to be able to get air, uh, make sure that that board didn't get too hot. Okay. All right, so now we've gone all the way down underneath Underneath the uh, blanket um, that covers the bottom of the RV. So the batteries are now in my cargo area. As you can see, I have two AGM batteries. 196 amp hours each. Okay. I brought in my solar wires to the terminals down here. Okay, I also have a shunt in here for my battery meter. I will show you that in a minute. I have a 300 amp fuse for my um, inverter, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Okay, I'm now outside. Those those batteries that I showed you. By the way, you see that hose there? That is actually for a vacuum cleaner, central vac. But I got uh, my main wires coming in for my 2000 watt inverter. I have not used any of the plugs. I can and will use them for any power tools that I wanna use uh, here outside the coach. Um, and here is a uh, where I terminated my wires going back into the kitchen hutch, which I'll explain that in a few minutes. Uh, that's a 10 gauge wire. Okay. Uh, this is the wire for the remote operation of the inverter. We're actually running the inverter today. Uh, we are, we didn't realize it when we made our camping reservations that we were going to end up with a 30 amp service and we have dual air conditioners so what we did is we put all the receptacles on the inverter and I'll show that to you in a minute put our uh, fridge on propane and our hot water here on propane so we could run both air conditioners both actually have not been running at the same time so uh, Usually during the day, the living area is on. At night, the bedroom one comes on uh, a couple of times. So, anyway, I'll pause this. All right, so I'm back in the coach. 
you saw where my bed where my solar power is going now you see where now I want to show you where my inverter power is coming in at so here's that remote switch I told you about we're on the inverter right now we are at 13 volts or using 0.11 amps we're barely using any wattage now remember this is going to the this meter is going to show a positive if i'm putting power into the batteries and a negative if i'm taking power out of the batteries so right now let's see well we have a tv on and an ice maker but we are obviously making more power than what we're using We're at negative 0.4 amp hours out of out of two uh, hundred and three hundred and ninety six ninety eight three hundred ninety eight amp hours. We're at ninety nine point nine percent. In other words, we're at infinity right now at thirteen volts. Okay, I'll get to this little baby here in just a second. So underneath. And behind this panel is a automatic transfer switch the automatic transfer switch has two power sources it has a power source that coming off of here which is this 30 amp and it has a power source coming from the inverter the load from the uh, from the automatic transfer switch is this panel this panel has all of the receptacles that used to be down here rewired to it okay so what used to be the bedroom dryer which was also the tv is is now this switch um i call the front of the rv the forward cabin uh, by the way this panel is normally used in a boat so if it's good enough for a boat, I knew it'd be good enough for an RV. Uh, the forward cabin outlets are like the washer outlet. Uh, the outlet outlets are all my GFIs. That's in the island, the kitchen island, and on the passenger side of the rig. The microwave is on this. The main cabin outlets, which is the the uh, kitchen slide and the uh, uh, lights or receptacles by the back window. So one, two, three, four, five receptacles have been wired to here. This one used to be two. This, this one used to be one, three, four, five. So what does that mean? What, what, what does this mean, uh, the way that I've wired it? What it means is when we're on receptacle power, power provided by a campground, Everything in here and here gets power. But if we don't have power from the from the campground, it don't matter if this one's on or off. If we don't have power going to it, but we have the inverter on, everything on this panel still gets power, as long as I have power in the batteries. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get myself a piece of paper, and I'm going to try to explain to you how exactly I got it wired in. Okay, uh, by the way, uh, this type of wiring that I did, uh, don't get offended ladies, but the guy that told me how to wire this was from um, a dynamic or progressive dynamics and he called it wife proof. Why did he call it wife proof? How many times have we been on inverter and somebody turned something on that you didn't want to run off the inverter because you ran the, you ran the inverter through the whole main line? I took out only what I wanted to power on the inverter. Whatever's on this panel can be operated by an inverter. But the air conditioners, wait a minute, the air conditioners, the water heater, and the fireplace cannot run off of the inverter because it's too much wattage okay all right i hope that made sense give me a few minutes to get a piece of paper and i'll try to draw out my whole uh, system uh, in a schematic all right i've got this all drawn out and i'm going to see if i can explain this 
and we're doing it in three sections. First, solar charge. I'm going to have two systems, wired in series, coming to two separate charge controllers. Uh, the positive of the solar panels goes through 30 amp circuit breakers. Maybe I should use a pin to point instead of my big fat finger. The positive coming out of the solar controllers go through 30, uh, through, uh, 30 amp circuit breakers. They both get wired to a terminal block. We used heavier gauge wires to run about 24 feet or so to the batteries. Okay, so that's the charge side. All right, the storage side and part of the, the charge side is here. I got two AGM batteries at 198 amp hours each. The converter still charges those batteries and the solar charges those batteries. I have the power coming out of those batteries going through a shunt, which is my battery meter. And I got power coming out of the batteries going to my 2000 watt inverter protected by a 300 amp fuse. Okay, you following me so far? Okay, so that's all DC that I showed you. And I thought I'd get fancy with the red and black. Okay, here, this one you'll have to follow a little bit closer. Okay, I don't know how to get rid of that glare. All right, well now you got a shadow. Let's go, eh, shadow again. Okay, right here. All right, what we got here is the same solar, or the same 2000 watt inverter that I showed up here, but now I'm gonna show you the AC side. Okay, the AC side goes to an automatic transfer switch, whether it's coming from the inverter or whether it's coming from the campground or a generator. Now granted, from campground or generator actually means from a 30 amp circuit breaker, I put in the main panel. In any case, it's, it's uh, a 30 amp coming this way and it's my inverter coming in this way. The power coming out goes to that sub panel that I showed you, okay? It goes, uh, they're all 15 amp breakers. TV, forward cabin, microwave, GF GFCIs, and the main cabin. Now, the way the automatic trans, the ATS stands for automatic transfer switch, if you're watching and you didn't, and I lost you already. The automatic transfer switch will come, will automatically switch to inverter if I have the inverter turned on. If I don't, the whole rig goes dead. If I go over and turn on the inverter because I have no power available from the campground or a generator, then it will automatically switch and provide power to the 120 volt sub panel. If the power comes back on and the inverter is still on, everything will remain the same. Power will still come through here um, through the automatic transfer switch and, and power that sub panel through the, from the batteries or from the inverter. I have to turn off the inverter for it to automatically switch back to the campground. Now, there's a 15, sec, 15 to 20 second delay if we lose power and we turn on the inverter, but if we turn off the inverter when power is available, it's instantaneous switch over. Okay, so that is my, um, my new power generating station per se. Um, what uh, what this does is, like I said, it's wife proof. Okay, comments, questions, suggestions, you know where to put them. I hope you guys can see that. Take one more little picture here. I'm trying to make sure there's no glare on it. It's almost impossible. That makes it worse. You want me to hold it up for you? I don't know if that would help or not. No, because then you can see what I wrote it on. <laughs> How about this we one? have a state sticker. No, that one was worse. That's why I turned it off. Uh -huh. We have a state sticker map, but I needed something that had a big, large white surface, and this seemed to fit the bill. And if I stand, let's see, if I stand over here. Okay. Oh, now you shadowed it. There you go. I think we got it right here. All right. Take a mental picture. All right, thanks for watching.